Welcome into our National Signing Day coverage here at the University of Colorado. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. It's going to be a good day for the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, head coach Carl Durrell joining us here for a couple of minutes. And I know it's a little over a week or so before Christmas, but you already got a Christmas smile on your face. I do. I'm, I've been waiting for this day for quite a bit. Um, but I'm excited about this class. It's a, it's a very important class, and we'll get a chance to visit about them in a second. You know, Carl, it's a different process. You got here so late last year. You kind of hit the ground and cobbled together a class. Now, it turned out to be an awful nice-looking class, but this process, even though with all the restrictions we had with COVID and all those kind of things, you kind of got a running start at this one, which I think probably helped the process, correct? It did help the process a little bit. You know, we, you know, we had, first of all, the 20 class that came in this summer was a tremendous class. Sure. I mean, unbelievable class. And a lot of those guys are playing for us right now. And, you know, we have bright futures in their, in their, in their careers. And, you know, this class, we wanted to kind of back it up with the, this 21 class to be in a class that really can impact us just as, just as well. You okay. Know, we, you know, we have some freshmen that are playing. There's a good chance that some of these freshmen in this 21 class will be playing. You know, a lot of them are are very, very talented, just like the 20 class. So, you know, we feel really, really good about how these guys are going to impact us. They're really going to impact our depth. They're going to impact how we play. You know, it's, it's, it's exciting for our future. Now, here's an interesting aspect about this. A lot of times when you sign a class, they're buying a product. Because of the way the season was, and as late as it started, you had a message, you had a vision, you sold these guys, and the bulk of them probably committed before the Buffs eventually got in the field in November, and they saw the product that they're going to be playing for. So that's interesting how they bought into what, you, what your vision was. That's, that's the most impressive thing that I like about this class because mm -hmm. they are – uh, not only confident in their abilities, but they actually believed our message. You know, they believed what we're standing for, what we were building, the process of what that was going to take. They understand that they're going to be a big part of that, that there's work to be done. And even though we've had a lot of success this year, and it's great that our team that has really has done a, a, a great amount of success this year, we know that we're not finished. We're not where we need to be. And this class kind of has that mindset about, you know, I, I understand what he's trying to build. I'm talking about me as in Coach Durrell. And, yeah. and even though they haven't seen a lick of it and made their decision prior to us starting to play this fall, that tells you a lot about their character and, and what they think that they can do to help us. When you and your staff go out and, and you're sitting down in a living room with mom and dad and a potential student athlete, what, what's the message that Carl Durrell is selling? to those people our big message is that our culture is so unique it's so different it's a great it's a, our, our culture is about building our athletes our student athletes to be the best that they can be in mm -hmm. everything that they do in life so I want them to be great students and I want them to compete on in the in the classroom for that I want them to be great players and compete on on the gridiron so we want to have that balance we want guys that want to be difference makers in both of those arenas because you know we know how this is this is a very uh, a social network society yeah. right now and a lot of it is is building your image and likeness of who you are as a person and we think that Colorado being at this university and playing this level of football and and all the other great things that go about it is it can help a man really establish his platform hmm. about who he is what he stands for and then how he can impact our country and our society in a positive way and these guys completely agree with that so you you gotta in this day and age what you you're trying to get at, if I hear you right, you're, you're selling a sizzle, obviously. You've got to have that in your program, but but there's got to be substance behind that, and, and that's kind of the, the uh, point you were trying to make with the, all these kids. Absolutely, because yeah. I know that most of these kids, they come from, it can be where they have two parents in the home or one parent in the home. The bottom line is, is that my job, I believe, is that I need to make sure these guys, when they're done at Colorado, when their eligibility is exhausted and they have opportunities in the NFL or have opportunities in the business world, that they have both options. Yeah. You know, I want them to be able to aspire to be a great you know, NFL athlete one day. I want them to work and do those things, and we got great coaches that can help get them there. But it's not just football, because football only can be played for so long. It's also getting that degree and understanding that you creating that brand for yourself in a positive way, and you have your degree, that opens up so many doors, you know, in the business side of things. So I want our student athletes to be great at all of those things so that they have success both on the field and off the field. You know, it's a great-looking class for the University of Colorado. We're going to talk to the position coaches coming up and get their individual thoughts. But as you look at this class, 
talk us through it and kind of give us a few thoughts about this group you put together. Well, it's it's a it's I call it a, it's a small class, but very very impactful class. Mm -hmm. Every position really has a chance to compete and help us this fall. You know, for example, you know, we have uh, we've had a shortage of tight ends, you know, in our yep. current team right now. And we've had some guys that stepped up and done some real positive things. But getting a guy like like an Eric Olson that is a local kid and he's a dynamic player that can really impact us right away, you know, mm -hmm. that's one of those guys that he knows he can be of influence in us right away as soon as he steps on campus. You know, Drew Carter, the quarterback that we've recruited, he knows that we don't have a lot of quarterbacks in our program, and he has a chance to compete and get himself elevated on the depth and maybe even be the starter at some point in time in his career in an earlier fashion just because he knows that he, he believes in our style of offense, he understands what we're trying to build, and he sees himself playing here. And he's also, by the way, an excellent basketball athlete, too. And Tad, Ted Boyle actually spent some time with him on the phone from that standpoint. Right. So we have a number of guys that, you know, offensive line-wise, you know, Jackson Anderson, really athletic tackle. You know, he, he actually ran track and runs the 100 meters in high school. As a tackle. As a tackle. That's what I mean. So we, we every one of these guys, it's because we're looking for athletic linemen in both sides of the ball and he fits what we're trying to build in, our, in terms of our foundation and our program. So those are just an example on the offensive side of guys that we think can impact us and really elevate our level of play in an earlier fashion. No matter what program you're involved in, it's always important to keep the local guys home when they can play at this level. I heard a coach years ago, he said, we may get our arms and legs elsewhere, but our heart and souls coming right here from our home state of Colorado. You feel it's important to keep those kids home? Absolutely. And, and that's the thing that I need to make sure that I'm reaching out. And I've done a number of outreach already to our, uh, our high school coaches about it is so important that we have great representation of our best players right here in our program. Mm -hmm. And that's my job to make our program att attractive. So we have to have success, just like the success we're having this fall. We have to have success so our local kids see that this program is on the upswing. It's going back to what it used to be back in the 90s. It's yeah. doing some really positive things to compete for the conference championship year in and year out. I want them to look at Colorado's thinking that they're playing a, a, a chance to play a championship level football in the Pac-12, but also the ultimate goal is to get this program in the, the CFP is trying to get in the college football playoff. Yep. And that's what we're going to try to get ourselves to, and we want to get there in a hurry. Here's the crazy thing about this never-ending process. He's smiling right now because he's got a great class, and he's already thinking about 2022, aren't you? Yeah, that's <laughs> yes, part of the process, right. You have to continue to move forward and build the classes. And, and like I said, the 21 class is great, but the 22 class you have to be up and early on and getting those evaluations done too. And we're, our staff has done a tremendous job already with, with looking through those 22 class members already. Yeah, there's no rest for a college football coach. It's never ending, but today is a great day for the University of Colorado. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. All Appreciate right, it. head coach Carl Durrell. It's a great looking class on National Sonic Day here at the University of Colorado, and you do heard about the brand new Buffaloes. Everyone knows championships are won in the trenches, so it's only right to start this class off by introducing the defensive line signees. Here to introduce them are Lance Carl, Aziz Shitu, and DJ Bryant. So without further ado, the Elevate 21 defensive line class. Buff Nation, it is my honor to present to you the first player to commit to the Buffs after Coach Carl Durrell was hired. He's a playmaking defensive lineman from one of the top high school programs in the country. At six foot three, 265 pounds, from St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Alan Baugh. All right, Alan Baugh, tell me why you committed to see you. Uh, I committed to Colorado because I felt really comfortable with the uh, coaching staff and I really just wanted to experience something new. Also, being from South Florida, I thought it would be cool to you know, leave the state and you know experience winter and uh, fall and um, just was ready to uh, take on another challenge in life. Absolutely. So you mentioned that you're excited about the coaching staff. So what's your first impression on our, our new coaching staff? Uh, extremely driven. Uh, all of them have ties back to Colorado in some way and um they they all uh want to bring it back to the way it was back in the 90s and you know they they talk about you know building a the, the process and building this thing brick by brick and uh i'm just trying to help them do that and 
you know, and help us as a team achieve our goals and our goals in the future and, um, and uh, make Colorado and bring Colorado back to the place it should be. What is a goal that you've set for yourself at your time at CU? I just become uh, a better uh, person. Um, you know, football will come, you know, football comes and goes. Uh, I fully believe in myself that I'll be able to be a great player at Colorado, but more just, you know, developing as a, as a person, as a leader, as a man, you know, just uh, developing into a, the young man and obviously going forward after football and after college and having a successful career in whatever I do. If he rushes the passer as well as he plays 2K, <laughs> we got ourselves a good one. 6'5", 270, out of Shadow Creek, Texas, I present to you Tree, a.k.a. Ryan Williams. All right, Ryan, tell me why you committed to see you. I committed to Colorado just because of the, uh, the coaching staff. Um, that was a big thing. They made me feel like at home. Um, Coach Wilson, Coach Aziz, they always call me every week. Telling, telling me like how they can't wait to meet me and stuff, um, how how good time I'm having at CU, um, especially Coach Aziz. He feel like he's like a big brother to me. He always playing around and making jokes and stuff, and talking about he gonna smack me in the game and stuff, which I know that's not gonna happen. But you know, he he, he they all give me good vibes, so that's why I decided to commit to CU. That's what I love to hear. Um, so with our new coaching staff, what is your first impression of what we're doing and what we're building here? Uh, so yeah, what y'all doing is wonderful. Um, um, I feel like I can make an impact, um, come up there and do my job. And uh, I just love the way that, uh, especially the uh, drills that Coach Wilson has been sending me. I like the drills. Um, I like the way practice is going. So I feel like when I get up there, I'm going to have a wonderful time. No doubt about it. Great. So what are you most excited about coming here? Ooh, just meet new people because, you know, I've never been outside of Texas. So meet new people, um, see different scenes, new sites. That's the main thing I'm excited about. This next signee is a big fella all the way from Jacksonville, Arkansas. He works hard in the trenches. He commands double teams and he plays with high motor and high energy. I'd like to introduce you guys to Tyus Martin. All right, so Tyus, tell me why you committed to see you. Um, this just felt like felt like home, you know. Coaches, they always kept in contact, you know. We just didn't talk about football when we talked. We talked about like life and you know, family wise and everything else. So it was just perfect fit for me. What are your first impressions of our new staff? I don't know. I just like I just like how they just keep it keep it straight up with you. You know, they don't sugarcoat anything. Um, you know, they always tell you like what to do, what to work on. You know, so. What is a goal that you've set for yourself when you attend CU? A goal, um, you know, come in, you know, ready to play, just ready to play. Um, you know, of course, my goal is to come in, you know, to start, you know, try to get, you know freshman of the year, but um, you know, I'm just ready to come in and ready to work. And we continue on our signing day coverage here at the University of Colorado at CUBuffs.com. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, defensive line coach Chris Wilson joining us here for a couple of minutes. Chris, it certainly was an interesting year. I know for a lot of you guys, you didn't get a chance to really meet these kids or see them in person, a lot of virtual stuff. How challenging was it to evaluate without having that in-person stuff? You know, Mark, it had its challenges. Yeah. Uh, number one, not able to uh, physically see these guys off the hoof, which is for big guys, that's huge. Sure. Uh, so what you had to do is be creative, uh, getting a chance to watch these guys on video, working out and training, that was big. But the, the biggest thing is always the biggest thing, and that's making sure that you have a great evaluation on these guys. Yeah. And I felt like we did that as a staff. Let's take a look at the first one. There's three defensive linemen we'll be talking to Chris about. Defensive end, 6'3", 253, out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Alan Baugh. Tell us about him. You know, Allen is a guy who comes from a great program down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, St. St. Thomas Aquinas, which is known for uh, developing great players, but specifically defensive linemen. Talented guy, um, great family, uh, high football IQ, as well as uh, 
smart kid, so I'm excited about his upside. He gives us a lot of position flexibility uh, at his spot. Well, Alan Boss is name. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video. As you can see him here, uh, he's got natural size and ability. The one thing he shows on this play was his ability to change directions and then finish at the ball carrier. Great job of here wiping off blocks and, and making a great tackle in the backfield. Game's changing a lot. These guys just aren't straight line players. He also gives you enough flexibility on the play you saw earlier, the ability to rush. This play here was really a great play by him. Good change of direction and great job of tracking the football. All right, from Allen Ball, we turn to a defensive tackle now for the Colorado Buffaloes. He's 6'3". Boy, he's a hefty young man at 318 pounds already out of Jacksonville, Arkansas. Tyus Martin, he's already big. Tyus is a, is a natural big man, as we like to call him. Not manufactured. He's a natural 300-pounder. Uh, comes from a great football tradition there in Jacksonville, Arkansas. Uh, the biggest thing that he brings, to is not only a natural big man, but a guy with big-time athleticism. I think his ceiling only gets better. So 6'3", 318. Let's look at the tape of Tyus Martin. Here you can see great swim move. Very rarely do you get that type of athleticism from a guy his size. And then you look at him here on a double team, his ability to, 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 to beat the double team and then go track the football is really explosive. This, this next clip is probably one of my favorites. Good swim move, good job of tracking the football and then finishing with a sack. And a lot of guys his size, again, don't have that ability to play on third down. He gives you the ability to play both on first and second down, but as well as third down. Great play here by finishing on top of the quarterback. So Tyus Martin, the big body. Let's talk about another defensive tackle. This one out of Pearland, Texas, 6'5", 260. Tackle Ryan Williams. How about Ryan? Really excited about yeah. Ryan. Uh, down from uh, Shadow Creek High School, won the state championship at the highest level down in Texas. Uh, looking for guys with championship predigrees who come from winning programs. Um, Really has a big upside, 6'5", 270, can play the defensive end position as well as the defensive tackle position. Really excited about what he brings to the table. Ryan Williams, let's go ahead and look at the tape. Great job here by Wyatt. Really explosive quickness, great lateral change of direction here by him. The one thing you notice is his great length. Uh, I don't know what his wingspan is. It was obviously I haven't had a chance to measure it off the hoof. But again, really good, talented guy who can get there not only with his explosive quickness, but also with his great length. Really great play by him, great change of direction, especially in the open field. Here's another awesome play that I thought was really interesting. Great job of being able to win one-on-ones, and that's the big key component now. These guys having the ability to play on all downs, first, second, and third down. Great play by him of defeating a block there and then finishing on the quarterback. Chris, it, 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 being that you haven't had a chance to really, as you talk about, you know, get your hands on these guys, really see them in person, mm -hmm. tell me about your evaluation of defensive linemen. What are you looking for? What are the kind of things you want to see? Well, the, the biggest thing is is just traits, mm -hmm. and and there's a, there's a systematic way of what you're looking for. Obviously, uh, natural size and length; mm -hmm. those things are really really important. And then you're looking for a trunk to see if this guy can put on natural weight and get bigger and stronger. Yeah. But again, the biggest thing is that you're seeing in this day and age is guys' ability to play in space. It's not like the old days when it was three clouds. I mean, three yards in a cloud of dust. Now guys have to play in space and make tackles on really good athletes. Yeah, there is something about that. We've seen a little bit too much of that in the past year where they brought a guy in wanting to make him into the size of player they wanted. Yeah. You like them to come in and be big fellas already and then just kind of tone that up, correct? A absolutely. Yeah. The biggest thing is is that, you know, as, as, a, as a coach and as a teacher, you're looking for traits you can't teach. Yeah. And, and that's what you're looking for. You look at those guys, you look at their what their, their process is and their length and their size, and then everyone has a unique trait. And if that unique trait obviously supersedes that size, we'll, we'll take an Aaron Donald, <laughs> even though he's not your prototypical guy because he has dominant traits. You bet. That's Chris Wilson, and you just met three brand new defensive linemen for the Colorado Bulldogs. For our next signees, we've got the offensive front seven with two physical maulers and a true Y tight end. To present our next offensive signees, we've got Donovan Williams, William Vallejos, and Jason Grossman. The next signee we have Jackson Anderson, number 56 from Mineola High School, Mineola, Texas, 6'4", 290 pounds. You might want to have him anchor your relay team. He's a big guy. Proud to have him as a buff. Do you have 
did you have any other top schools in mind besides CU? Um, I never really made a list, but I don't know. Ever since I got the offer, I was I was like, this is probably where I'm going to go. So what are your first impressions of the new coaching staff? Um, I really like them a lot. I think they're really great people, and I know they're going to be good coaches. So what is your goal for your time at CU? Um, I want to get a good degree and have a good fo- time playing football and really learn a lot. Thrilled to introduce our next signee. He's a player from my home state of Alabama. He's an infectious personality to add to the program, and he shows the nastiness you want in an interior offensive lineman. We knew from the day we saw him on tape, we had to make him a buff. 6'4", 315-pound, Edgar Amaya out of Russellville, Alabama. So let's start out. Uh, what's an interesting fact about you or something random just about you that people might want to know, Edgar? Ooh, I could play three different instruments. Okay, what instruments? Trombone, saxophone, and the guitar. That's pretty impressive. Okay, what's a, what's a goal that you've set for your time at CU? Uh, for sure to take over as a starter at one point, but the whole time to keep a positive attitude to make sure we're the most physical team in the Pac-12. Awesome. Why, uh, what, what made you want to commit to CU? It's family over there, like every, like just the way everybody clicked, especially when I was on my virtual visit, it's family. Like everybody was clicking, we all gelled together. And then the culture there is different. Like you could tell that we're going to be something special, that we're going to run the Pac-12 and that everything goes through us in the Pac-12 from now on. Awesome. What, uh, what are you most excited about Boulder as far as is, it could be football related? It doesn't have to be. What, what excites you most about Colorado? Finally getting to meet my brothers because I've already been in contact with a lot of people on the team and we're for sure all excited. We already have that connection. I'm just ready to meet everybody. Uh, put the put a face to the name. We continue on a recruiting coverage on Sonic Day 2020 here at the University of Colorado. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, Mitch Rodrigue, the offensive line coach here at CU. Mitch, before we get talking about a couple of uh, big fellas for you, unique year recruiting. There were some challenges that uh, played into this entire process, weren't there? Yes, there was. And, uh, you know, one of the things that was comforting in in this recruiting process, at least for me, is that I have a personal relationship with uh, one of the kids that we've we've signed. So I know his background uh, really well, even though I hadn't had a chance to work with him in a camp or or see him in person. Uh, And I have a a good relationship with one of the high school coaches of our other pro, uh, recruit that uh, that I feel confident that he gave me some good insight on the kid. Nice. Good. Well, let's talk about the first one here. He's 6'4", 290 pounds out of Mineola, Texas, Jackson Anderson. Tell us about Jackson. Yeah, well, you know, Jackson is the son of Leon and Amy. Uh, I coached Leon at the University of Southern Mississippi, but I won't tell you how long ago. So, anyway. uh, We can guess, though. Yeah, yeah, we can guess. But, uh, you know, his dad was a great player back then, and uh, and, and, uh, Jackson has two other brothers that played at Texas A&M. So, you know, comes from a long line of football uh, players, and I felt really comfortable about Jackson. He's very athletic. He's physical. Played a lot of defensive lines, so he's got a lot lot to learn. Uh, about being an offensive lineman, but it's, it's a big upside. You know, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm broadcasting the sons of guys that I broadcast years ago, <laughs> so I know exactly what you're yes, talking about. Yes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video of Jackson Anderson. Well, you can see right here Jackson pulling, so you can see his athletic ability, and that's uh, one of the things that uh, struck me as a, a big positive. Uh, you can see here his explosiveness, uh, putting people on the ground. Uh, I just, you know, he's a great student, he's a smart kid, uh, wants to be a business major, and I I just think he's going to be a fantastic addition. You know, he is a heck of an athlete on top of being a big, big body. He also played basketball and ran track. Yes. yes. So he's an athlete on top of being a big big body. Boy, I tell you, you ought to see him run the the last leg of the big man relay. It's, uh, (laughs) It's pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. We've got another offensive line to talk about. This one out of Russellville High School in uh, Russellville, Alabama. Six foot three, 
325 pounds, and his name is Edgar Amaya. Tell us yes. about him. I, actually, Mark, uh, Edgar, that's, that's kind of old. The, his, he's 6'4". Okay. 6'4", and 325 pounds. Edgar is a tre tremendously strong kid. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll think I'm crazy when I say this, but he actually cleans 425 pounds. Wow. That, that is amazing. And that's a, that's a sign of explosiveness when you can uh, clean that much weight. Uh, but he's a powerful kid. Uh, his dad, mama, good people, uh, Rosa and Edgar Sr. Obviously from Russellville, Alabama. I know his head coach and his head coach had a lot of positive things to say about him. Uh, again, a unique situation where you can't see a kid it's been mm -hmm. a dead period so you have to rely and trust on high school uh, coaches evaluation and your evaluation on film and I, I feel really good about Edgar. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video of Edgar Amaya. All right here you go this is uh, Edgar Amaya. Edgar's a really good football player coming from Russellville Alabama. Edgar's a really good uh, drive blocker. He runs well, very athletic, really smart student, uh, which I like. We like smart guys around here. Uh, Edgar's going to be a great addition to the Buffaloes. That looks like good stuff from Edgar Amaya. For both of these two players we're talking about, where, where do they fall in on the offensive line? We talk about guards, tackles. What do you see them yeah, down the road? You know, uh, Mark, I, I really believe both of these guys are going to be guards. They're going to mm -hmm. be inside guys and, and possibly a center. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we you know it became evident to me that uh, when we had all of these injuries at center and guard that we have to shore up our inside you know I, I think that the offensive line the heart of an offensive line is is the inside guys those are the guys that create push and movement uh, you know and I just felt like we really needed to get some inside guys and next year we'll concentrate on the other I would like to uh, introduce uh, our next signee uh, who is an extremely versatile player, uh, former basketball player, converted to tight end. Uh, he's very physical. He's good in the pass and run game. He uses his body to create separation at the top of his routes, and he's also good at making tough catches and uh, able to separate from defenders. Uh, excited to introduce uh, the newest member of the Buffalo football family from Littleton, Colorado, the pride and joy of Heritage High School. Eric Olson. Well, why uh, that will lead into my next question. Why commit to see you? Kind of what was it that, that really drew you to Colorado? You know, um, they have a great engineering program. Uh, you know, they have a great, they have, well, they have a great mix of everything I was looking for. Like some schools were, you know, super good at one thing. And other schools, you know, they were sort of lacking in that area. Uh, CU has great education, especially engineering department. Um, you know, they have great football fan base and um, the coaching staff. You know, I'm super comfortable with coaching staff and I love Coach Embry and Coach Durrell. They're both uh, super great guys and I'm excited to play for them. And, you know, just the mix of all those things and a couple other little points that really made my decision to see you clear to me. What's well, uh What's a goal that you've set for your time at CU or just coming in to Colorado? Um, so in short term, I'd like to, um, you know, definitely get a lot of playing time as much as possible freshman and sophomore year, obviously. And then as time progresses on, you know, I continue to get better. I want to like, I would like to see myself on, you know, a Pac-12 first or second team by, you know, my junior or senior year. I mean, that'd be, that'd be a goal of mine. And then last but not least, what are you most excited about getting to campus? You'll be an early enrollee, so you'll be here in about a month's time. Uh, what, what excites you most about Boulder? Um, you know, it's, it's different right now, but I would say normally, you know, just the, the town environment, like going down Pearl Street um, and after a win or something like that, you know, just seeing everybody super excited. Um, everybody loves the football team and just being a part of that community where, um, you know, the Buffs football team is just so important to everybody and um, just the supporters behind it. That's really what I'm excited for. Well, we again can't, can't wait to get you up here. Uh, it's going to be here before we know it. And we're excited to see you rock that black and gold and make plays on, uh, on Saturdays. Yes, sir. 
Back in a recruiting coverage here at the University of Colorado on signing day 2020. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, Taylor Embry, tight ends coach here for the Buffaloes, joining us for a couple of minutes. We're going to talk about a new guy that you've gotten, but uh, first off, it's been a unique year recruiting-wise. You feel good about this class? I feel real good about it. You know, it was awesome coming in and kind of putting together this class that we got, um, and I'm excited about it. You know, I'm excited about our future, and I think we got some real game changers coming in this class. Let's talk about the tight end. 6'5", 240 out of Littleton from Heritage High School. We've heard his name a lot in these parts. Eric Olson, what kind of player are we talking about? Eric Olson, and he's a hooper, you know, and that's kind of <laughs> looking at this, how I wanted to start building my room, him being a hometown guy, a Colorado native, him being a basketball player, big frame big body he's big in person now and uh, you know he'll be real good he's got good feet um, and he likes to finish you know you, you see him in the run game finishing guys um, and I think he's gonna bring you know kind of that next level of attitude and athleticism to our program what is it with basketball guys and tight ends I mean you've seen so many of those transitions there, there must be a unique kind of a transition from the, one to the other. You know, there is, and the, my pops taught me this, the tight end position, everything, you're in a box. You know, a lot of times when you're catching the ball, you're using your body to shield and, you know, catching away from your frame. Um, you need to have good feet. You need to react quick, you know, be able to go up and get the ball. And I think that's kind of basketball that gives you that kind of skill set and is real useful in, as a tight end. Another great tight end. Let's go ahead and take a look at some video of Eric Olson. Here we go looking at Eric coming underneath. Good job using his hands here. And this is kind of what I'm talking about from his athleticism. Catch the ball and go. Outrun the defense. All right, looking at it here in the run game. And this really what flashes to me is finishing guys. You know, finishing guys to the ground. Here it is, him going up and getting the ball. You can see the hooper in him right there, high pointing the ball and then catching it and staying on his feet. Um, so I think, you know, those are kind of some of the traits that we got looking forward to with Eric coming. You know, Taylor, he's also going to be, just like Drew Carter, the quarterback, going to be a mid-year guy. So he comes in next semester. You, you like the value that guys pick up when they come in early, have a set of spring practices, and kind of learn the college life before they actually jump into their um, freshman year? And definitely, and especially when they're hungry like him, that's going to give him a few more months, you know. So by the time season comes, even though he's a freshman, mentally he'll have a, a, an advantage over the other guys coming in. So I think that's huge. Like I said, he's hungry. He's ready to work. It'll be good. You get to teach him the technique there, the fundamentals. You can knock all that out. And then when fall comes, get ready for season. And it's awful nice keeping those Colorado kids at home, isn't it? It's always nice. I mean, it starts with the Colorado kids. I'm one, too. So. <laughs> that's right. He knows what we're talking about here. That's Taylor Embry, and that's a look at the Buffs' brand new tight end. Up next, we have a great group of linebackers coming in. Uh, they're physical and they can direct a defense. Buff Nation, I think you're going to like what they can bring for our defense here. Uh, to present them will be Brian Cabral and Junior Tanivasa. I have the pleasure to uh, introduce the next signee. Uh, he's a player after my own heart. He's a tough, rugged, physical, hard-hitting uh, inside linebacker. Uh, he led his team to the state championship. He's a leader on the field and off the field, like most great linebackers. At 6'1", 235, from Liberty High School, inside linebacker, Zephaniah Maya. Uh, why did you commit to Colorado? Uh, I committed to Colorado, you know, just going based off on, you know, just research, you know, the communication with Coach Durrell, Coach June. You know, they took their time, um, you know, seeking into my talent. And I believe I can do something great at uh, the University of Colorado. What are you most excited about? Uh, mostly just, you know, just, just playing football because that's what I love to do. And, um, you know, I'll be the first one to go to college in my family, so, so it's going to be great. So what's an interesting fact about you that Buff Nation might not know? Uh, just my leadership, you know, um, when times get tough in the game, you know, comes in a different situation. Uh, my leadership really to, you know, give each one of the players uh, that line mentality, help finish strong, no matter where, you know, winning or losing. So I just be my leadership is something that, you know, will shock uh, the University of Colorado. Go Buffs. 
And we continue our signing day coverage here at the University of Colorado. And see you bus.com. Signing day 2020. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Defensive coordinator, Tyson Summers, joining us here for a couple of minutes. We're going to talk some linebackers. But first, boy, Tyson, this had to be a challenging recruiting process for you guys, being all the restrictions and all the virtual stuff you had to do. How do you think it turned out? Well, I think it's really good. Uh, we've got a good group of linebackers. I think we signed a good class overall on defense. I think a lot of that goes to uh, credit to Coach Durrell and obviously our recruiting department. Um, but there have been some challenges like everything with COVID. Uh, you know, a, a lot of these young men we, we haven't had a chance to see. We haven't been had a chance to go in their home. We haven't had a chance to go in their school multiple times. And so, uh, uh, you know, and, and probably more challenges for the recruit than the coaches, truthfully, and uh, and for their parents. But it's been, been an interesting process. I think that us working through technology as best as we could and trying to really work hard at developing relationships and trust has been the most important key. All right, let's uh, meet the player. Inside linebacker, 6'1", 230, out of Henderson, Nevada, Zephaniah Maya. Tell us a little bit about Zephaniah. Yeah, Zephaniah is about 6'1", 230 pounds, and uh, one of the top players in the state of Nevada. He comes from Liberty High School, uh, won the state championship last year. They were actually, I think, the first team in, in almost a decade to beat Bishop Gorman with that. But oh. uh, outstanding player. He's uh, he's very quick and, uh, and explosive. Uh, great young man. If you talk to him on the phone in five minutes, you'll fall in love with him and you'll understand why he's uh, the type of player and the type of leader that he is for his team back home. Zephaniah Maya is his name. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video. Here's a play where you can see Naya. He's able to diagnose the screenplay early on with the guard and the back being the same side and is able to be able to go track it down and be able to make a nice play. Uh, as you can see right here, he's coming through with the quarterback. He's able to sit, di diagnose, again, the guard being down in the picture right now and then him being able to come up, make a play on the quarterback read create a fumble. Here's an interesting part where you really get to see his ability to run. He's able to go chase the ball. There's a uh, screen out on the numbers. He's able to chase that thing from inside out and be able to make plays on the perimeter. One of the things we like best about Nye is his ability to make plays inside the tackle box, his explosiveness, and uh, and also the ability to be able to see his athleticism out on edges. And uh, and you can see his leadership throughout as you see him as he communicates through, through the rest of the defense. Tyson, when you go out and evaluate uh, a linebacker like that, obviously you want a guy that's physically gifted, sure. but but kind of being one of those inside guys, kind of like we got Nate Lamman right now, you want the guy that's that's got that defensive mindset and, and kind of the understanding of the, the system you're running? Sure. I think uh, I think one of the most important things, like you said, we, we're all trying to evaluate and trying to sign the most talented guys that we can. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I, I'm not someone that feels like every inside linebacker needs to be, you know, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, or anything like that. I really think that playing linebacker comes down so much into into being able to have instincts mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that's one of the things where Nia is very uh, similar to Nate is that you see a guy that plays with a lot of instincts and a guy that is able to diagnose run plays very quickly and uh, and then has got bad intentions once he gets to the ball obviously <laughs> and they both have uh, very similar in that regard yeah well he's Tyson Summers and you just met the newest Buffalo the name kind of rolls out the tongue Zephaniah Maya I have the pleasure of introducing our next signee uh, out of Chandler, Arizona. He is an outside linebacker that is 6'3", 250 pounds, and is an athletic specimen. Very twitchy, very explosive off that edge. And um, without further ado, Zion Mangale. Puff tight to the left. Continuing coverage of signing day 2020, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, linebackers coach Brian Michalowski joining us here for a couple of minutes. Now, I know this this class overall wasn't easy to get to because of all the odd restrictions we had, but you feel good about uh, what's being done here today for the Buffaloes? Yeah, I feel very, very strongly about the class that we were able to put together. And like you mentioned, it was, it was tough circumstances during this year with the pandemic, but uh, I think it, at the same time, it allowed us to really create good relationships in some uh, unusual ways, getting on Zoom, having having some good phone conversations, and you had to be consistent. And right. so we've built some good relationships throughout this year, and I feel very strongly about the class. All right, well, let's talk about the player. Outside linebacker, he's 6'3", 220 pounds from Chandler, Arizona, Zion Mungale. Tell us about Zion. Yeah, Zion, Zion is, number one, Zion is a, a great kid, comes from a great football family uh his, his his older brother there was a, there was a connection with 
um, his older brother was was someone that was recruited to Northern Arizona by uh, Coach Junior Tanavasa, who's on our staff. Coach June had a good idea of his family and and knew what they brought. But uh, Zion, Zion is is a a, a winner. He, he he goes to high school Chandler High School. That's won four, four consecutive state championships, and he's a very active player. He's very sudden, very productive. Um, he has a great frame, and he's very passionate about the game, and that, that's, that's been impressive about him. Well, that's the kind of player we want here at Colorado. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video of Zion Mungale. Yeah, so looking right here, uh, Zion is very twitchy off the ball, explosive in the backfield. You see he comes out of his hips on that tackle right there. Um, he is uh, active, getting after the quarterback from the blind side, plays on the right side quite a bit. Uh, on, on his defensive line. This is a defensive front that has a lot of really great players and, and he's a, a productive piece of that down there at Chandler High School. You see the dip in the bend. Again, getting home to the quarterback. So he's a great pass rusher, um, but he, he is physical against the run. Uh, you see him with a great uh, level rush right there. So he's got awareness where the quarterback is in the pocket. Uh, does a really good job for, for those uh, Chandler Wolves. You know, Coach, you talk about him coming from a great program that's had a lot of success. There, there's value in, in understanding what winning is, isn't there, when you recruit a kid? Yeah, absolutely. You, the, ha, ha, having someone that is a part of a successful high school program, you know, they, they know the commitment that it took to win it at that level. And so, yeah, they, they, they have an opportunity to come in and, and be an early leader. And, um, you know, he's his high school coach, Coach Gerritsen, has great things to say about him, say, say that CU's really getting a gem with Zion. Well, it looks like we got a great player there. That's Brian Michalowski, and you just met Zion Mungala. Buff Nation, up next, we have a pair of hometown receivers. To present them, we have Andrew Hamstra and Reggie Moore. For the next spot in the 2021 Buffs class, we have a guy who has been recognized as one of the top, if not the top receiver, in the state of Colorado this year. He weathered the storm between coaching staffs and stayed solid on his commitment because of his love for the program here at Colorado. As a Denver native, I'm excited to announce that Chase Penry, 6'2", 190 pound, will be joining the Buffs family. Welcome, Chase. First, uh, first off, I know you committed back uh, with the previous staff. Uh, but kind of what spurred you to that decision and, and why did you not reopen your commitment? Why were you kind of solid through this whole process with C? I think initially what made me want to commit so early was just the, um, my relationship with Coach Everini and the, um, just the, my feeling of in Boulder was just, I felt like I was at home. Um, it's obviously right down the road for me and um, seeing, and to your question about not opening up commitment, I think, um, I think honoring that commitment was really big to me um, and giving coach Durrell a real, a real chance to, uh, to hear from him and hear his um, just his kind of his plans for the program. And then to see it um, working out this fall has been truly amazing. And uh, I'm really excited to be a part of the team, the program, coach Durrell and the staff. What would you say you're most excited about getting to see you and being on campus, getting in the program? What, what excites you most? I think just the competition, um, I'm, re I'm ready to get up there and um, just get after it. Um, I'm excited to get, get to be able to see new face, new faces, meet new people. Um, and then also just getting in the weight room and uh, the conditioning program, just being able to be developed um, by such great staff. Um, I'm really excited for that too. Coach Drew Wilson is going to get you right. Got no doubt about that. Yes, sir. Well, talk to me a little bit about your senior season. Just, I know you won the state championship, but, but how do you feel? season went both individually and as a team uh yeah I think as a team we uh we had a really dominant season uh like you, we were talking about earlier we had a lot of um highly recruited kids and we kind of we came together this fall um when we got the word that we were going to play and we wanted we knew we wanted to do something special um and I think we showed that we came out and we dominated pretty much every game and so it was a really fun season as a team and then I think individually I had a really solid season um posted like my best stats that I've had um, throughout my whole career um, in, in a shortened season too. So it's, it's been a, a great year. I feel like I've definitely developed as a player um, and as a leader, kind of as a senior um, captain on the team. I think I 
developed a role on the team where I could kind of lead by example and then in the huddle um, lead with my words too when we, when we had some adversity. Bub Nation, the next signee I have the pleasure of introducing, local product that duels as a basketball player as well as a football player who's now focused on primarily being the greatest wide receiver in the state. Proud to introduce 6'4", 185, Ty Robinson from Eagle Crest High School here in Colorado. What would you say you're most excited about getting to Boulder and getting to see you? Um, I'm just excited to just put in the work and do everything that I can to make the team better and just show out. And I know a couple of kids up there already, so I'm just excited to see them again and just stuff like that. Absolutely. And um, what kind of spurred your decision to commit to Colorado? Um, it, was, it was mostly the, um, the family part. And it was also that, um, like, yeah, my family could watch me play. They could come up here. And it was mostly um, – there were some kids up there that play football that actually recruited me and, like, all the stuff that they were telling me. I just thought it was cool. And plus I visited up there a couple times and came to some games. And I just really liked, like, the atmosphere and just everything that was going on. Oh, yeah, when Folsom gets rocking, it's, it's something else. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. What were your first uh, impressions of this new coaching staff? And I know you've probably known Coach Shiverini for a while, but with yeah. the new staff, what were your first impressions? And what do you think about kind of this new culture that they're trying to build? Um, I just like how um, everyone in the staff is like really outgoing and they really care about their recruits. And I get messages all the time from the staff. And it's it's just really cool how, how much everyone cares and – how like dedicated you guys are and just everything like it's just cool i like it a lot those are high praises back on a continuing coverage of signing day 2020 voice of the bus mark johnson uh darren Cheverini, the offensive coordinator for the buffaloes wide receivers coach as well joining us here a few, few for a few minutes this has certainly been an interesting year recruiting wouldn't you say with all the things going on it's been the most interesting year i've ever been through as a coach um just you know it's a lot harder to get evaluations done can't really see the kids so it's been a lot harder on our staff as far as getting the evaluations done let's take a look at one of the receivers we're talking about today wide receiver 61 185 out of cherry creek so a Local kid, Chase Penry. Tell me about him. Yeah, I think Chase is a very, very good football player. You know, we had Chase in camp, so I had a chance to really work him out. Um, we had him in camp, obviously, before COVID hit. So I got a chance to kind of work with him, see him run routes, see his football savviness. And, and I, he really, really does a good job with his body control, has excellent ball skills, and, and is faster than people think. So I'm excited for, for Chase's future here. Chase Penry, let's go ahead and take a look at the video. So I think here Chase is, is running a go route and then makes an unbelievable catch with the one-handed grab. I, I saw this film already, and he's a phenomenal player. He, he really does have good body control. Here's another back shoulder fade that he runs against this corner from off coverage. They high points the ball really, really well and makes a huge catch in the end zone for a touchdown. He's been their best player the last couple of years. Uh, here's another great catch down the field on a vertical route uh, with him making the play. Ball's a little bit under thrown, but he goes up and makes the play. Um, just, just phenomenal ball skills and, and body control. Uh, I think you're going to see that uh, time and time again when he's in a Buffalo uniform. Just has the knack of making the big play again here on a big play down the sideline. I'm excited for Chase's future. He has a bright future. Now Chase Penry, good-looking athlete from Cherry Creek. I always love to keep those Colorado kids at home. The next one we're looking at, Ty Robinson, 6'4", big kid, 190 out of Aurora from Eagle Crest. Tell me yeah, about him. Yeah, so Ty Robinson was a kid that I really liked early on um, just because of his size and his speed. He, he's, a, he's an unbelievable high school basketball player. Um, is going to you know focus his, his talents towards football in college. But uh, here's a guy that has a huge ceiling. He, he's long. He's He's got good ball skills. He can stretch the field. And I, I see Ty making a lot of plays for the Buffaloes in the next couple of years. Yeah, Ty Robinson actually had a Division One basketball offer from Minnesota. Let's go ahead and take a look at his football tape, though. Yeah, so here's Ty, Ty Robinson, like I said, a long athlete that can run. You see him catching a, a deep dig route here and then making a guy miss. And then obviously he's got he's got he's a long strider with good speed. And you don't see people, you know, catch him too often. Here's another down the sideline uh, catch, but he goes up and makes a, a high points it over the guy and, and just really does a good job with his body control. And you see that time and time again with Ty. Another big time play in the end zone going up and he's 6'4", he can jump. You know, if you see him play basketball, he dunks on people all the time. It's, it's pretty special. 
Uh, here's another big time play on a curl route where he gets out in the open, makes guys miss. Um, and, and I think Ty's best football is ahead of him because he's been playing mostly basketball most of his, his life, and now he's going to focus his talents towards football. I think he's going to have a huge ceiling. Chef, in the last few years, you've done a great job of identifying guys, and they're not all the same. I mean, you know, different yeah. sizes, different types of wide receivers. What's a similar quality with all of them you look for at a wide receiver? You know, I, I really and I really look at how do they work in practice. So I'm real big on seeing guys live, and, and I got a chance to see both Chase and Ty in this unique year. I've seen them live before, and so I'm really big on how do they work in practice because I know what the film shows me, but I want to see how they work in practice because if they do that, I have a good enough eye for talent to see, okay, what – can their future be and um, I, all those guys have in common that they're hard workers and it's paying off for us this year and what you're seeing on the field with like guys like Dimitri Stanley you know Dimitri Stanley's games took to the next level yeah. but I think all those guys have that in common well he's Darren Cheverini the offensive coordinator here at the University of Colorado there's two of your newest wide receivers Chase Penry and Ty Robinson and finally on the defensive side of the ball we're gonna have a large group of defensive backs coming in they're going to create a no-fly zone on the back end for us. Here to present them will be B.J. Johnson, Brian Cook, Chris Downis, Emily Funky, and Scott Unrein. Can't wait to coach this kid. He's a 6'2", 180-pound corner, long kid. Went all the way to North Carolina out of Huff High School to uh, get him. Tyron Taylor. Go Buffs. Started off, what's, uh, what's an interesting fact or something that CU Buff fans might not know about you? Um, when I was seven, uh, got my black belt in Taekwondo. Okay. So you're not one to mess with? <laughs> no, not at all. Why commit to see you in terms of what, what was the, the thing that pushed it over the edge? I say, uh, well, Colorado has an awesome football program and the education is a top priority for them as well. Uh, it was basically like a call from heaven saying this is the right place for me. Uh, the communication with the coaches as well, Coach Durrell, Coach Summers, Coach Meets, uh, the strength and conditioning coaches also showed love with the virtual visit. Also, uh, Scott Unrine, Andy Wang, you as well. Uh, you know, I have good relationships with you guys. I talk to y'all like on a daily basis, weekly, week to week. And uh, also, I'm from North Carolina, so why not move into another state and see what Colorado has in store for me? Absolutely. What uh. I know you're going to be on campus here shortly, but what, what mm -hmm. excites you most about CU? It doesn't have to be football related, but yeah. just excites you about Boulder or Colorado in general. Uh, the experience, moving into a different state, uh, being around different people, uh, even though, you know, you guys like probably are not the, where I'm from, but uh, different people and uh, playing a game of football at a higher level, which I love. And also uh, Boulder is a beautiful place, so I can't wait to get out there. Excited to present our next signee, a versatile corner, who's a great athlete. The second year in a row, we've signed a stud out of Oaks Christian in Southern California. It's six foot, 180 pounds, Kalen Moore. Uh, why did you commit to Colorado? Um, it was a combination of things. Uh, the support from the coaches. Uh, I've already been there before, so I already, um, Felt a little bit un, like, unfortunately, I didn't get to go as much as I would want to because of COVID and everything. But uh, I did go there once before, so I got to see the campus and everything, uh, all the coaches and everything. So that was definitely good. And then um, just uh, Coach Me, um, just being really supportive throughout the whole thing and uh, showing that he wants me a lot really helped. So um, I really like the new staff. Uh, I also saw the um, old staff and they were like, um, they were good coaches as well, but um, I feel really comfortable with the new staff that just came in. Um, they definitely showed a lot of interest in me. So I'm thankful for that. And uh, I'm really excited to get out there and just help them have a good season. So what are some goals that you've set for yourself for your time at Colorado? Um, uh, basically, to break it down, it's um, I have uh, a goal for academics, a goal for and a goal for football. So I want to make sure first that my grades are um, up to speed and all my grades are done first. That's what my parents tell me to do and uh, make sure all that's handled before I even get on the field. So 
I want to do that. And then when I get on the field, just do my best every day, go hard in practice, go hard in the game whenever I get an opportunity. And yeah. You can never have enough versatile athletes on your team. And that's exactly what our next signee is. A speed demon at corner with the ability to add value as a returner. 5'11", 165 pounds from Moreau Catholic in California, Nico Reed. First question I got for you. Why did you commit to CU? Uh, I committed to CU because I just like the coaching staff. I feel like I could fit in the, pro uh, the program very good. Uh, they kept it real with me, and they didn't tell me what I just wanted to hear, but they told me how it would be when I get there. And also, I feel like this program is a good program. It has new coaching staff. Um, the DB coach coached me and Coach Darrell the new, so it will kind of um, – we have a kind of connection of going to like a new school kind of like that. And um, I just feel like it's power five. I feel like it's a, um, a good conference to play in. What are you most excited about at CU? Um, I'm most excited about just a new environment because, you know, I'm in the Bay, Colorado is kind of like, I've never been there. It's uh, just new for me. And, I'm just excited about uh, getting out there and playing football. All right. What's an interesting fact about you that uh, Buff Nation might not know, Nico? Um, back my freshman year and last year, uh, I'm really good at art. I could do like, like self-portraits of myself and stuff like that. Okay, cool. And can I get a go Buffs? Go Buffs. Go we continue with our signing day coverage here at the University of Colorado at cubuffs.com. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson, joining us, Demetrius Martin, secondary coach for the Buffaloes here, talking about some new young buffs. First off, kind of a challenging recruiting period, I would think. You guys get here a late start to begin with, and then, of course, everything gets, gets shut down. That was kind of a, a, a different uh, kind of recruiting period, I would think. <laughs> yes, very different. It brought, <laughs> brought, us, brought amongst some challenges that we did not expect, but uh, all in all, we got through it. Well, here's the first guy. We're going to talk to you about cornerback. Tyron Taylor, 6'2". Boy, you like that length. 175 out of Cornelius, North Carolina. Tell us about him. Yes, sir. Tyron, he was, he's a long, athletic, uh, versatile playmaker. And uh, that's what we were trying to kind of bring to the class. Guys that could play multiple positions, um, do a lot of things. And like you just mentioned, his length, his top-end speed, and his coverage ability has showed a lot. It's amazing, Coach, when you think about the transition and how guys have evolved in that corner position. Yes, sir. You know, they're not five foot nine anymore. They're all yeah. six two, six three, <laughs> six four, aren't they? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're looking for that length. You can even uh, sometimes you look at it. For me, I look at it as a guy that's a little bit longer can be a step shorter. Sure. A short step, step, step slower. I'm yeah. sorry. Be just because of the simple fact that they have more length to cover more ground. You bet. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look, look at the video from Tyron Taylor. Good. Like we talked about earlier, Tyron Taylor has very fluid, fluid hips, good ball skills, being to his different playmaking abilities. Um, uh, has a very good high football IQ, understands technique, um, knows leverage, and uh, plays the ball really well in the air. Uh, one of the, the main things I like about Tyron is uh, he has no panic when the ball is up in the air. He goes after it and gets it, and he's not the kind of guy that gets real grabby and uh, you know, it's just natural ball knack for him. So I'm looking forward to getting him here on campus and, and un unleashing him on some of these Pac-12 receivers. There's Tyron Taylor. Let's look at the next defensive back for the University of Colorado. This athlete, Kalen Moore, six foot 180 out of Westlake Village, California. How about Kalen? Yes, sir. Kalen, uh, he's a special guy. Um, he's the son of a coach. Mm -hmm. um, so his football intelligence is very high, um, very athletic, plays a lot of different positions. He's also a pretty dang good receiver, too. So we got to keep that <laughs> under our hat because you know Coach Carl Durrell's history. He's been a receiver coach. You're going to have to fight Steeler. Carl and Sheva yeah, for him, aren't exactly you? Exactly right. Exactly right. So, no, we're, we're really excited for him because he brings a sense of toughness and a quiet confidence. Um, I think he's a kid that has some natural leadership skills that we're looking for within every every class, and he's going to bring that. He, he played with Mr. Williams as well, one of the current buff. That help a little bit in recruiting yeah, process? Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. did a really good job for the short time <laughs> that I was here to yeah. help recruit and will that one in. So kudos to Mr. on that one. Yeah, fantastic. All right, let's take a look at the tape of Kalen Moore. Kalen, like we talked about, um, 
Uh, like I said, he's a he's the son of a coach, so he has a very high football IQ. Here he shows a lot of position flexibility, running a good out route, then stop and start, so his change of direction and all that kind of stuff is really good. He's bursting on the on the comeback route right here, which I like because he's catching it with his hands, and then it's hard to bring down because of his offensive uh, background. So he's very smart, very tough, um, all-around player. He can even return kicks if we need him to. All right, that's a look at Kalen Moore. We move on to Nico Reed now, 5'10", 160, out of Hayward, California. Tell us about him. Yes, sir. Nico's the jitterbug of the crew. Um, I can't <laughs> wait to get these uh, guys up here to represent the CUDB pedigree. Um, these guys, uh, Nico himself, he gets after it. Hmm. Um, he's a guy that plays in multiple positions, kick returner, plays a little offense, plays corner. He can even move inside and play the nickel spot, too. So he's a guy that we're very excited to get up here, too. All right, sounds like an exciting athlete let's take a look at the video of Nico Reed like we mentioned with Nico I mean you can see right here his playmaking ability um, being able to go up there and grab balls with one hand over the head making unorthodox catches contorting his body in all kind of different which ways and others but he's a guy that has a foot high football IQs you can see him splitting the zone right there coming off of his receiver then overlapping and making an interception on a receiver that you know wasn't in his responsibility here he is picking up a punt return off of a bounce, making a lot of guys miss, and he's getting jiggy with it, as they say. <laughs> Nico, good eye con uh, football intelligence, um, getting open here on the uh, fade route, playing the ball at this highest point, just what we need. Demetrius, when you evaluate a guy that plays corner, you can look at the, the measurables, right? How they run, the length, all those kind of things. How do you measure the, the, the mental toughness that a guy's got to have to play that position? Well, I mean, it's, it, it comes with uh – Depending on the people that are surrounding, that surround the kid every day. Yeah. You want to dig into the film and see their not so highlights. Mm -hmm. And you know, see how they bounce back. And one of the things that I like is the guys that have short memory. You got to have a short memory. So when once you see who has that and who doesn't, then you can be able to tell their football character, as I say. You know, what? when things get tough, how they play. You bet. Well, that's the. Secondary coach Demetrius Martin, and you just met three brand new secondary players for the Buffaloes. I'm excited to present our next signee from my home state, a physical ball hawking safety who has a knack for pick sixes. A big safety at 6'2, 200 pounds from James E. Taylor High School in Katy, Texas, Trevor Woods. Okay, Trevor, so why did you commit to Colorado? Uh, for me, it was just the relationships I was able to build with some of the coaches. You know, I got along with them really well. Um, I have family around the area, and, I mean, it's, Boulder's an amazing place. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what are you most excited about once you get here? Um, probably, uh, like, game days, you know, it's, you know, having a, you know, hopefully having a, you know, filled up stadium, you know, just getting to play in front of that every, every home game be pretty awesome. Yeah, Folsom definitely gets uh, rocking, especially at, like, night games, you know. Yeah, but uh, what's, what's an interesting fact about you that some of Buff Nation might not know? Um, I throw a baseball with my left, but I throw a football with my right, and I do everything a little bit differently with different hands and all that. Our next signee is someone that Buff Nation is already familiar with. He's worked incredibly hard on the field and in the classroom to get to this point. We could not be more excited for his arrival in January. Six foot four, 220 pound safety from Iowa Western Community College and Legend High School in Parker. I'm honored to introduce Trustin Oliver. Welcome to Boulder. So why did you commit to CU, Trustin? Uh, just over the course of the, the years, you know, come from high school to junior college, me knowing that uh, you guys still uh, believed in me and trusted me to be a part of some of the great things you got go guys got going up there. And I just felt like it was, a, you know, a right move to make uh, just to be able to have a good career on and off the field. What are you most excited about? Um, I wouldn't necessarily use the word excitement. I'm just, I'm just ready. You know, it's, it's been a, it's been a long, long ride and I'm just ready to get up there and get things going and, and just to, you know, finally get up and just to show you guys what I'm about. And you mentioned that it was a long ride, you know, what made you uh, decide to uh, stick with CU after your long road? Cause you kind of took like a, uh, an offbeat path to get here. 
Uh, sticking with you guys, it was it's just the the communication you guys kept up, and even though there was a little coach and change and stuff like that, you know, even coach uh, coach Carl Durrell, he gave me a call, and I felt like he was a really stand up guy, and and coach Tyson Summers and coach Maxi and coach Meat, some ama- some uh, some amazing dudes, and and I've got a chance to talk to them since the pandemic really started until today, um, and we keep constant communication, you know, weekly, and it's just amazing to see. They care so much just to keep in contact with me. And then I do, I also do the same. And that just means a lot for someone coming from junior college looking for a new home or looking for a home, I should say. We continue with our signing day coverage 2020 here at the University of Colorado. It's UBuffs.com, Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson, safeties coach. Brett Maxey joining us for a couple of minutes. It certainly was a challenging, I would have to say, uh, recruiting period for you guys. You got here late. You had to jump into it uh, in that regard. And then, of course, all the, all the COVID stuff. You feel that this class came together pretty well, though? I think it did. You know, yeah. uh, I was very – I wasn't very optimistic about, uh, you know, me coming in as late as I did. And, and not having an opportunity to, to watch film on any of the kids, sure. um, you know, that I needed to, that was on the board. And uh, so I had to come in and I had to hit the ground running. <laughs> and, um, but once, once I got into a rhythm, you know, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as bad as I, as I thought. And, and I was able to find a lot of uh, prospects, nice. you know, during that short period of time that I was you know, during the recruiting period. It, it's amazing what we've learned to do through Zoom and, and oh. <laughs> virtual meetings and all those kind of things, isn't it? Yeah. Let's meet the first one. He's a young man from Parker, Colorado. We've heard his name a lot surrounding this program for a couple of years from Legend High School, Trustin Oliver, who comes in off a of bounce back. He committed, then went to a junior college. But tell us about Trustin Oliver. Trustin is, is an incredible athlete, hmm. and that's what he is. He is an athlete. You can probably play him just about any anywhere, on offense, on defense, uh, in the kicking game. He has that type of you know talent. Yeah. Um, you know he plays some receiver uh, in high school, and then when he got to uh, Iowa Western, they uh, they moved him to defensive back. He played some corner, and now he's at safety. And you know just talking to his his position coach, uh, learning the safety position was really an easy transition for him, hmm. which you wouldn't think, because he's almost 6'4", and he's like 215 pounds, Wow! and he moves like a cat. Are you going to have to fight some of the offensive coaches for him when he gets on Absolutely campus? Absolutely, I am. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm I bet you are. Do it. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the video of Trustin Oliver. All right, so here's, here's Trustin uh, out at corner. You know, he's a big physical uh, player at the point of attack. Uh, he's a good tackler. He likes contact. Um, you know, uh, when the ball is in the air, you know, he, he t- you know, he he turns it to the receiver, and he's used to that because he has spent some time playing playing receiver. Um, he has an incredible, incredible uh, vertical. He can mm-hmm. go up and get the ball. Um, you know, his his wingspan is 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 incredible, and then the run after the catch. Is unbelievable. This kid, you wouldn't think him being 6'4", 215 pounds, right. that can move like that. Yeah. It's like a linebacker, outside linebacker, oh, for goodness sakes. I know. And, and I haven't seen him in person yet. Right. I've just seen him on, on Zoom. Love it. Can't wait to get him in the black and gold. That's Trustin Oliver. Let's talk about the next safety. 6'1", out of Katy, Texas. Tell us about Trevor Woods. Trevor... Uh, you know, um, from the great state of Texas, you know, that's where I, I grew up <laughs> right. in Dallas, and uh, he's right there in Houston. Um, when I when I first looked at him, I'm like, why haven't we offered this kid? Wow. And 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 I don't think he was on anybody's radar. Uh, he had a lot of uh, academy, military academy uh, offers. His dad was a was was a defensive back at uh, at Rice University, mm-hmm. so I was a little skeptical about recruiting the kid because he was right there in Houston. His dad played at, at Rice. That was his first offer. And I, quite frankly, I asked him, I said, do I have a chance to recruit you and, and get you to Colorado? He said, coach, absolutely you do. I have family there. Uh, and the rest was history. The kid is unbelievably talented in terms of ball skills. I have not seen a safety that I've recruited because in, when I was in college two years, 
you know, for the, the two years that I started my career at the, at the college level, yeah. I've never seen a, a prospect like him in terms of ball skills. Well, let's go ahead and get to the video right now for Trevor Woods. Trevor actually, you know, he actually uh, had four touch, uh, interceptions for touchdowns in his junior season. Mm. And uh, and you're talking about a guy that, that has instincts and range, he's tough. He's an unbelievable blitzer. Um, you can you can play him behind the ball at linebacker if you want to, uh, but we're going to use him at at the free safety spot because our free safety is asked, you know, to be in the box and and, and tackle uh, like a linebacker, and and the ball skills are just I mean they're incredible, uh, and the kid has unbelievable speed, you know, run after catch. So the two kids that we have. The one thing that that I that that jumped out at me right away was their ability to go get the football. Right. And you want you want guys like that. You know, I, I think about uh, the measurables you're talking about. Both these guys are very very good athletes. Yes. Is another quality you look for in a safety? Is is it just that that kind of intestinal fortitude, toughness in that position? I think defense. Period. Right. You got you have to have that, that defense mentality. And, and both of these young men do, and, and, and trust and play, you know, offense. Sure. Uh, so it, it's it's natural for him in terms of the, you know, the toughness. We, you know, because you think that when you make the transition from offense, especially at, at a receiver to defense, there's going to be, you know, some. It's going to be a little skeptical, uh, looking at him, thinking that, right. you know, are we going to have to teach him how to be tough? Which you can't. You can't teach anybody. To be tough, it has to be innate, yeah. and and he has that innate ability to be tough. Well, Brett's got me excited about these two guys. That's Brett Max, your safeties coach, and you just met two brand new safeties here at the University of Colorado. Last but not least, for our final two signees, we have a kicker that will take our special teams to the next level, and one of the leaders of this 2021 class, our quarterback. To present them are Darian Hagen and Brian McGinnis. I'm ecstatic to present the next signee. He's an Under Armour All-American with a big leg from Rockland, California. Please welcome Cole Becker. Well, uh, what were your, or who else were your top schools? I know you were committed to Iowa State, um, but talk to me a little bit about your recruitment and that process and, and kind of how it ended up leading you here. Yeah, so it was pretty much a couple, it was like about a month ago, a month, month and a two, month or two ago, um, but it was between Iowa State and Rice, um, and I ended up committing to Iowa State. And what would you say you're most excited about getting to Boulder and, and getting to see you? I'm just, I'm, I mean, I was excited for the football, but just everything else the campus has to offer, um, really like the town, and then obviously looking forward to meeting some new people. Did you get to go down on Pearl Street when you were here? Yeah, we went down there like four times. <laughs> we continue our national signing day coverage. Voice of the boss, Mark Johnson, Chris Ryder, back with us once again. We've got another Buffalo to talk about, a kicker by the name of Cole Becker from Northern California. Chris, tell us about Cole Becker. Cole Becker's a big-time prospect, a uh, big kid, about 6'3", 215, big-time leg. Uh, you watch all of his kickoffs in, in high school, and he's got a lot of touchbacks his junior season. Uh, his junior season as well led the state with 14 made field goals. He was 14 of 15, really excited about him. Uh, certainly kicking at altitude will help as well, and uh, you know, he's got a really high ceiling. You know, one of the uh, stories I tell all the time on the air, years ago, Joe Klatt said about Mason Crosby, when it comes to kicking, there's nothing to it, plant the left, swing the right. <laughs> Besides the big leg, what do you look for in a kicker? Uh, you know, somebody that's mentally tough. Okay. You know, somebody that can go out there situationally and with the game on the line or, you know, conditions are tough and go out there and block it all out and put it through the upright. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the video of Cole Becker. You know, what you'll see here off the right hash, a 45-yard kick. You know, he approaches it with confidence. He hits it uh, at some point in critical juncture in the game right there. Uh, another kick right here. You just kind of look at the way he approaches. He's confident. He hits it through. Big-time leg. It's hitting up high on the uprights. Um, you know, 14 of 15 for a high school kid on field goals his junior year is big time. Hopefully he gets a chance to play his senior season up there. And then again, right here, you saw a lot of this his junior year. Big time touchback leg. This ball's out the back of the end zone. Located really, really well. We're excited about him. Yeah, good stuff. Cole Becker, the newest to Colorado Buffalo. How'd you stumble upon Cole Becker up in Northern California? 
you know, he's, he's really highly regarded with Chris Saylor and Jamie Cole, uh, two resources that, you know, we trust, yeah. uh, guys that work with these guys, you know, hands on basis all the time. And, you know, you watch the film, you get to know him, you talk to him and, and he fits the makeup of what we're looking for from a personality standpoint. Well, that's Chris Reiner. And you just met the newest color of Buffalo, Cole Becker. Last but not least, we have one of the leaders of our 2021 class. He's a two sport athlete. He's planning on playing football and basketball here at Colorado. We're excited about his future. He's real athletic. 6'3", 195 pounds. Drew Carter from Tigard High School in Tigard, Oregon. But, uh, okay, why, why commit to see you? What kind of drew you to this place? Sure. I know you had the opportunity to visit campus on your own, and it was a Definitely. dead period, but, but why commit to see you? Yeah, no, I always said I was going to go where I most wanted. You know, you guys really made me feel that way. And I took a visit out, a visit out there um, uh, earlier in the summer, and uh, I loved it. I, just, I just instantly fell in love with it. You know, the community, uh, just Boulder, the city itself, it was super nice. And it really felt like home. I really felt wanted there, and I'm super happy with my decision. Awesome. What's a, what's a goal that you've set for your time here at CU? And it could be, I know you're, you're planning to yep. play basketball well, but right. uh, what's a goal that you may have between those two sports? Definitely, just to win, flat out win. You know, I would like to bring a championship to Boulder for sure. You know, I think that's always the goal when I, when I play a sport. What would you say you're most excited about getting to see you and experiencing or doing? It doesn't have to be all related, but but what definitely. excites you about this place? Definitely just to be part of the Buff family for sure, you know, just to get there and uh, just start working, you know. I, I'm super excited to really just get there and enroll in school and do my thing. Hey, we're pumped too, man. We, we I can't believe yeah. it's already here. Right. And then last but not least, what were your first impressions of the new coaching staff and what do you have yeah. to say? about the, the new culture that we're trying to build here and yeah. kind of the up for ourselves. I'm super, super impressed with the, where Coach Sorrell and the program is going. You know, I think uh, Coach Lange and Coach Chav and Coach Sorrell have really made me feel um, welcome, to, uh, welcome to the Buff Nation and uh, definitely just super excited to learn from all of them. And I'm super pleased with my decision. We continue with our signing day coverage here at the University of Colorado at CUBuffs.com. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson, quarterbacks coach Danny Langsdorf joining us. Well, first off, we're going to talk quarterback here in a moment. You feeling good about this class and the way it's coming together? Really do. It. Uh, we kind of had to scramble a little bit coming in late, but um, I, I like how this has come together. I feel like we have some really good players and excited about the, this group and getting here and getting to work with them. Thinking about what we've all gone through in society with, with COVID and the fact that you weren't able to have real visits, a lot of virtual recruiting. You guys had to be creative through this whole process. Yeah, it was a different deal. Something uh, a lot of us have never done before. <laughs> you know, we were talking to doing our home visit as a, as a Zoom meeting, um, trying to do virtual tours. Um, you know, a lot different recruiting than we've ever been used to. Some of these guys, I'm not sure I've ever been to campus, so, <laughs> right? <laughs> which is really crazy. But um, it's for having uh, gone through all that, I, I do think that we have a good class and uh, feel good about where we're at as a, as a program and, the, and the, um, the group coming in as freshmen trying to get to work with them. It, just excited about getting going with them. All right, let's talk about this quarterback. Drew Carter, 6'3", 195, dual threat quarterback out of Tigard, Oregon. What kind of player are we looking at here? I think the, the biggest thing that stands out is his athleticism. Um, it's a, a, a kid that's a multi-sport athlete. Um, you know, he's a guy that, that can get out of some trouble with his legs and, and has enough arm talent to make all the throws. I've um, known about this kid for a long time and um, very fortunate, kind of a, a long process, but really fortunate to get him. Let's go ahead and take a look at some video of the Buffs' new quarterback, Drew Carter. Yeah, you, you can see the, you know, just from the video, how, how much um, ability athletically that Drew has. He's very good with ball faking and movement in the pocket. He throws the ball with touch. You can see some of the deep balls. He's got good air on them. Um, getting on the perimeter and, and, and the rollout game, the boot game. Uh, he's an accurate thrower. Uh, he's tough. He's smart. 
um, you know, all the intangibles of that position show up with this kid. I'm really excited about him. Um, played a lot of football for Tiger, and they're a good program. Um, that, that staff, I've known uh, those guys for a long time. They've got a, a great program uh, out just outside of Portland there, and uh, we're lucky to get them. One thing you and I have talked about before when it comes to quarterback, you're, you're really big on, on accuracy. Uh, he's got that kind of ball? He does. He, um, you know, he, he's able to make all kinds of different throws, um, whether they're deep balls or the, or the touch throws, uh, the quick passing game, intermediate play action, all of that stuff. And, and he does that with good accuracy. Uh, he's got a smooth delivery. He's got a quick delivery also, uh, which is a great thing. And then on top of all that, he's a good athlete. Um, he's able to, uh, like I said, he, he can move in the pocket. You can get him on the perimeter and throw the ball on the run. Um, he's great with his fakes. Um, he's, he's really polished, and I, I love that about him. You, you talk about him being an athlete. He played on a very good AAU team, Seattle Rotary up there, with a couple of other guys who were big-time recruits. And he's at least had thoughts of entertaining about potentially playing college basketball. So a little work with the, the basketball side here at CU potentially. Yeah, he, uh, he had uh, multiple um, offers in basketball also. Um, and, and for a while, I think he was trying to sort that out, whether he wanted to, to focus on one. Um, we kind of twisted his arm and got him into playing football, but he's going to play some basketball too. And uh, our, our basketball staff knew about him. Um, you know, he's a prolific scorer in Oregon. Um, you know, he's a guy that uh, I think had options on both. So, and I love that about him because he's competing all the time. Um, we're going we're gonna to do our best to, to move him around and use his athletic ability. But um, he, he's one of those guys that are, that's rare that could, that could probably play both in college. Well, it looks like the Buffs have got a good one. That's Danny Langsdorf looking at our new quarterback. Back one final time on our National Signing Day coverage. Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson, joining us now, the Director of Player Personnel for the University of Colorado, Bob Lopez. Bob, this has got to be, uh, by this point in time, a sigh of relief, I would think, right? We're almost there, yeah. And it's, uh, it's um, we, we'll have a few more guys maybe to, to, to sign subsequent to the to today, but um, but yeah, it feels good to, to have the, uh, the 21 class going in. Uh, originally, when we started back, uh, when we first arrived um, arrived here, the new group, um, the uh, kind of the motto or the theme was Elevate 21, mm -hmm. and we feel like we've accomplished that. So it feels good at this point, and uh, and uh, we'll. Uh, it's always a, a moment where you can take a little bit of a deep breath. And lastly here, I know you want to congratulate this class because uh, you're bringing in a great group of Buffaloes and now they get a chance to represent this university. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's, um, it's a great bunch of guys, like I mentioned, that we feel like they, they, uh, they fill, fill the bill. So certainly to, to congratulate them, um, their families, yeah. um, great families uh, that, uh, that we're also getting. Uh, welcome them to our family and just uh, tell them, you know, we're looking forward to to their arrival. We've got five guys that will come in the mid-year, uh, which is always really exciting. And then um, and then the balance of the class will come in in the summer. So um, it seems like such a long time coming uh, to get to today. And now the next thing is, is ramping up for those guys that will be here in January and then the rest of the class as they – they arrive in June and July. Yeah, and as they're welcoming that class, Bob and his staff are already looking to the following year and starting that recruiting process already. <laughs> well, congratulations. Great job. Thank you much. All right. Bob Lopez, Director of Player Personnel here at the University of Colorado. There's hundreds and hundreds of hours going into putting this class together, and we've met the newest class of the Colorado Buffaloes. I'm Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson. Thanks for joining us on this National Recruiting Day. We'll talk to you next time.